You know, if you ever find yourself almost to Mexico, what you need is a Toyota product. We're still in the San Diego area. We're still driving Toyota product. This is the last of those videos that came from four cars being driven in the same two days. This is the Crown Signia, which means wagon. Todd didn't like the Crown. Oh, that's underselling it. He didn't like it at all, no, actually. Not I a fan of the sedan. I thought it was actually pretty cool, and for Toyota to bring the Crown to North America is a great move. I do agree with that. It's a hybrid. People were asking me, is that the next Tesla? No, 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 no. It's the Crown. Many people in North America haven't heard of the Crown, actually. True, true, yeah. But not only has Toyota brought it back, it is now the Signia, which is a wagon, and I'm going to fight Toyota to the death. Uh-huh. This is a wagon, even though they yes. call it a midsize two-row SUV. <laughs> because nobody it buys is. wagons. Right. If you say wagon, it's sort of like, oh, yeah. that's the marketing term that won't sell cars, mm -hmm. even though... I think this looks even better than the Crown sedan. Absolutely. Which I do like, but this has changed. You'll notice, and you'll find out, that the, the Crown Signia has an entirely different front end mm -hmm. than the other Crown the sedan. Yes. It is called the Hammerhead Design. So that is Toyota's signature move. They've got a cool generative design intake and the, the grille pattern. This looks great, and it's a wagon. It is a wagon in the same way that the Subaru Outback is sold as an SUV and is also a wagon. So nobody wants to acknowledge the fact that there's a <laughs> successful wagon in the U.S., but I have to think that Toyota is looking at Subaru's success with the Outback and going, we should make a wagon version, and it's the best possible thing to happen to the crowd. Great cars, great roads, and all the reasons we love to drive. Road trips, comparisons, test drives, and podcasts. This is Everyday Driver. <laughs> now, the one thing about the, the, the sedan, I will say here, is that the sedan comes with the more powerful engine than this. Yes. This only comes with one engine. It's a 2.5-liter four-cylinder hybrid. It's a fourth-gen hybrid now. They've moved on to fifth-gen hybrid in the Prius and the Camry. This doesn't have it. 2.5-liter four-cylinder turbo hybrid. They're telling us, because it's hybrid now, 240 combined horsepower. Mm -hmm. There's quite a bit of torque from the hybrid motors. But they don't have a combined horse uh, torque number. It doesn't exist. Nobody knows. Nobody seems to know. Constantly changing, constantly fluctuating. Your guess is as good as Toyota's. <laughs> so uh, that's they don't know that number. They don't give it to us mm -hmm. because we've got an ECVT and because it's two kind of different powertrains. I mean, it's the same yeah. powertrain, but they're doing this on many hybrids, actually. Yep. But that's okay because... The Camry Hybrid is sportier, especially the XSE versions yes. are sportier than this is, mm -hmm. even though it has sport mode right down here. <laughs> Technically, it, it changes something in the code and the screen. I think that may be all it does. It just illuminates a mm -hmm. light and it says sport. <laughs> I'm on sport mode. And yeah. it's, just, it's just the light that comes on. I'm kidding. It's throttle response, but it doesn't mean that it's a sporty wagon. It doesn't mean no. it's a no. sports car, but it's not intended to be. And I have decided that this is about as small or uh, I guess compact proportions that push it towards a wagon okay. that the North American consumer is willing to buy. Mm, it is okay. wagon flavored yes. and it is right in between yes. SUV and wagon, mm -hmm. but I'm going to push it more towards wagon because enthusiasts love wagons and I think it looks excellent. I think they did a I fantastic agree. job agree. on this. Yes. And this will sell because of the styling. It mm -hmm. just looks cool. And you know what? If everybody's tired of an SUV, although I don't think the general public is, <laughs> the appetite is never going to go away. Sad, but true. I think that this will sell because it's a right size. It's just a little bit taller mm -hmm. than a car, but it's not so lumbering. I think this is fantastic looking. It comes in Whoa. decent colors, including a kind of coppery thing they call Bronze Age, uh -huh. which is, it's one of those colors that if I saw it on a color form, I'd be like, why would you put that on a car? But on the crown, it actually looks great. Sorry, the Chevy Aveo ahead of us almost had an off. They're almost, they're not entirely sure what lane to be in, and it might, be part of the, the it might be part of the canyon. Eyes yeah. up, look through the corner, put something, your phone down. Something, something. Do not go outside of the white line. Yeah. Sheesh. Clearly, enthusiasts designed this because wagon. Yeah. But the general population wants SUV. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of space in the back seat. Mm -hmm. It's excellent. Yes, absolutely. When you put the back down, when you have now an extended board to give to cover up that gap between the top of the back seat and over the where you'd put your legs, so mm -hmm. over the floorboards back there. Yep. So it actually kind of extends that usable area. 
like a wagon. And there's over six feet worth of direct length from the back hatch with it closed to the seat behind the driver. There is just over six feet worth of length. We fit back there. Paul's even done it. We, we do <laughs> fit. right. I did. It is a thing. Lay down back there. Yeah, it's so, it, it, it was quite coffin-like when you did it. It was a little spooky, it was but a little it, weird. It, it, did, it did exist. So it is amazing. They've got really good usable space here. This, you might not be able to tell, this comes with roof rails, but they've made them really low profile. So unless you actually look, that's when you realize they're roof rails. It just looks like a trim piece instead of being a big roof rail that comes up and over it's very sleek i mean this feels like the more luxurious alternative to the outback absolutely it is yes if you want to step up if everybody's tired of are we tired of outbacks yet is everybody uh, tired I mean, of them depends yeah because this is suddenly a great option and it's something that not everybody is doing mm -hmm. it looks like a fresh kind of category from toyota even though Subaru has been selling this for a long time yeah. and calling it an SUV, even though I maintain this is a wagon. It's a it tall is. wagon. It's just stop it. Just the proportions just of embrace? the windows. Yeah, totally make agree. it that way. So this tows 2,700 pounds. That means mm -hmm. all Signias tow 2,700 pounds, which is decent. Mm -hmm. That's not terrible. And then let's get to the styling. The Toyota Hammerhead styling on the front actually really works. It does look modern. It has a sporty flavor to it but it looks like an interesting vehicle. It looks like something you want to spend time in, and I think this is the sweet spot for not just families, but that adventurous kind of mm -hmm. Volvo cross-country mm -hmm. buyer, that sure. XC60 yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, yeah, totally. or V60 actually totally. cross-country, mm -hmm. XC90 cross-country, somewhere in there. I think it is that customer too, and it lends itself to like, okay, you've got a good-looking car, but it's useful too. That's the Subaru buyer, but you're right. Mm -hmm. This really makes it Kind of luxurious. It's classy. It starts the base the, model of this starts at forty three thousand yeah. dollars. This upper trim, which is the limited, starts at uh, forty eight. This one with the advanced technology package, which is a lot of road keeping stuff, and there's uh, mirrors that turn back when you go backwards and that kind of thing. That's uh, <clears throat> it's just over fifty one. It's not cheap. It's not inexpensive. Yeah, that, You're right. The, the most expensive Outback is cheaper than this. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a class above. It really is. But the fuel economy is better on this, and the interior makes you feel like you're getting something premium. There's I so agree. many standard mm -hmm. features on the Signia. Mm -hmm. And we're getting away from Piano Black. You can look in the interior. Toyota's doing a great job with the IP. It looks interesting. It's uh, kind of back to a, a hood, but mm -hmm. you get a large display right in front of you. And then this is about as big as screens ever need to be from here on out in every car. I agree, car. I agree. It's, it's fine, it works, and the landscape is perfect. It's two roughly 12-inch screens side by mm -hmm. side in landscape mode. We don't need the big vertical screen. This is plenty of screen. It's using, obviously, the latest Toyota uh, interface, and that's very good. I'm going to call this satin black. It's not piano black. It's like a satin black. It has the shininess of piano black, but because it has kind of a satin granular finish, look, I can touch it and it didn't ruin it. <laughs> I mean, well, yeah, I, I, there's still the smear, eh. but compared to what would happen on, on piano black, it's actually better. It's like notch one. It's, it's just up from piano black. <laughs> it is an improvement, absolutely. Still on the inside, this center console has a vertical place for your phone. So most G-chargers, you lay your phone flat, which does make sense, but this one is upright and it clicks your phone into place, mm -hmm. which is actually pretty ingenious. I noticed yep. that on the Crown sedan and I, I do like it here. So Toyota is really thinking about their customer mm -hmm. clearly. I, I feel like just about every category, they're just crushing it for giving you a compelling reason to buy their product over the competitor. I do have to say, this is the way the Crown should come. I, I don't like the sedan. I'm going to keep saying it. It's yeah. very weird. But you may like it. You may say it's the alt thing that you love for you. But I have to say, when I first saw this in wagon form, and now that I've driven it and been around it, I just think that's the styling this car should have. That's the form factor it should come in. Mm -hmm. Let's just embrace what it is and go. The shapes work. The material breakups work. This feels modern. It's interesting visually to the eye. Mm -hmm. The air vents, they're in the right spot. The seating position is good. And it feels like that balance between people who want to drive something high and have mm -hmm. a commanding view mm -hmm. versus the sedan buyer. It's really right in between, and I think it works for both. It's a wagon. It looks cool. You put surfboards on it, mm -hmm. mountain bikes. This, this is would look cool car. with surfboards, I have to say, yeah. This is cool looking, and it doesn't have to drive like a sports car for you to be proud of your car. True, true. I think that's good sweet spot for this car. The reason this is lifted is for ingress and egress, meaning getting out and getting out. Those are the, yeah. uh, the ridiculous journalist terms for it. But I will say that something has happened to me every time I've driven this, and it's going to happen to me right now before I do it. 
and that is this drives so much like a car, and I look forward to talking about it more mm -hmm. over there, that every time I open the door, I put my leg down as far as I think the ground should be, and my foot is hovering about three inches off the pavement because it, it feels like a car, but it's kicked up a notch, which you love if you have bad knees, bad back. That, that exists. That's a reality of yeah. buying cars for many people. So this actually gets you through that problem and still gets you into a car. Okay, let's see a step out and not... Step out and get it wrong? Yeah, for <laughs> sure. Here, it's a little... Yeah, it's, it's a lot farther than it... Yeah. Okay. All right, here we go. I'm in still in sport mode, aren't I? It's as sporty That's as it gets. That's about as much as you get. about as sporty as it gets. Okay. It's not the sportiest thing ever, it's but not. it looks sporty and it looks it cool. Does look, well, it looks classy. That's the thing I like yeah. about it. I, I think it looks just yeah. mostly classy than it does even sporty. I mean, this is the rarity in the wagon buyer because the Outback just looks utilitarian. Yeah. Okay. And this looks luxurious. This you is actually, above that. You can sure. actually dress this up and, and call it your classy family vehicle without having to step up into things like the E63 Super Wagon or the, the Audi, big Audis or Volvos that clearly are luxury cars with major luxury prices. You don't have to do that and get into what now feels like a high-end wagon. I want to say oh, if yeah. you're looking for wagons of any kind, you should go to autotempest.com. They can find you everything. They search all of the search engines for cars nationwide or even beyond that. They can search dealer inventory and find all the new signias autotempest.com and by the way use the, the URL autotempest.com slash everyday so they know that we sent you all the cars one search. I mean I'm still catching people. You are you, yeah. you know I, but that yeah it's the, not because there's no this information. Is super sorty. There's no information and look and the suspension is soft in any setting. We had four people in this mm -hmm. earlier and a bunch of gear, and we hit one of those major dips in the road that we sh <laughs> you shouldn't take with speed. And it was it, there was a lot of compression because it is naturally a softly sprung car. Now it doesn't wallow. I will give it that. It doesn't wallow. It doesn't. But You're it right. is soft, and it never stops being soft when you drive it. Now that lends to the luxury feel of it. There's actually acoustic glass on the front and the driver and passenger windows. That's excellent. That actually helps this have a quieter cabin than the new Camry, for example. Yeah, I like this balance because it's not like you've bought a hiking boot. If you buy an Outback, yeah. you've bought just a hiking boot. Fair. Wherever you go, if you're up in the wilderness, you bought a hiking boot. If you're at dinner, you're still driving a hiking boot. Sure, yeah, yeah. This has a, a class to it. It is definitely a luxury vehicle. The price reflects that, but it's such a nice balance. Remember in the 90s, they used to make a Camry wagon? It wasn't an attractive car, but there was a Camry wagon. There was a Camry wagon. And that doesn't exist anymore, so the reality is what you're buying, it's the same underpinnings. What you're buying here is the Camry wagon. The Signia doesn't have the stigma, see what I did there, of the Camry wagon. That that no, crown no. makes it feel like a classier name. It's a name with history with Toyota. I mean, I've always thought of the crown as an even higher end car than this. However, this doesn't have a Camry perception and it gets you, if you will, your Camry wagon. Yeah. But without yeah. being a Camry with a fantastic styling that feels all its own. Even though it has that shared front end look that is shared now with the Camry and the Prius and generally cars in the Toyota lineup, because of the, the silhouette of this, I think it maintains its own flavor. I always love to play product planner. Yep, I know you do. And I don't think this model is going to work for the Lexus brand because this is as luxurious as this needs to be. Mm. If you want something more, there's plenty of SUVs, but why would an SUV Lexus buyer look at this as a Lexus version of a wagon when you can get this and the, the standard features are already here? Mm -hmm. Toyota decided to put leather seating surfaces on all Crown Signias. They were looking at the cloth option, but they decided customers wanted the leather feel. This is a more premium ride, yep. and it feels like that. But let's talk about all the wagons that are high performance. Okay. AMG. Yes. E63S. Mm -hmm. The M3 Touring. Of course, the RS6. Gorgeous. Yeah. Does Expensive. Toyota <laughs> need to compete with that? Well, no. Well, no. But if they did the GR thing to this. <laughs> of course you bring it back imagine, to GR. Just imagine. <laughs> stay with me. Is it the ground? It's the ground. The ground. If they did this, <sighs> lowered it a little bit, <laughs> and put a performance drivetrain in this, I kind of feel like every enthusiast would suddenly buy this because it will be less than the AMG and the RS6 and all of the cool hot wagons that mm. we all 
absolutely want, this would be a cool option. The GR Crown mm. Signia. So you do the iForce Max engine that's available in the Crown sedan only. You drop it two, three inches. It'd have to have a little bit happy. more power. Yep. Yeah, drop it a little bit more. Put the put the ground badge on it. I like it. I can like you it. see it? I can. It's a little terrifying, but I absolutely I am can. I think it works. I feel this. I if think it, it were works. slightly yep. lower, because this comes with 21-inch wheels. Imagine this, slightly lower. Somebody's going to Photoshop this. <laughs> this is your task, Internet. I'm kind of feeling this, because the looks would indicate that it could support a GR Performance product. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. The looks actually suggest You look at it. this and you think, you're right. If that were a GR, oh, I totally buy that. I think you would. And then it'd be more of the luxury, hot performance, high-speed touring wagon. I love that as we drive Toyota product, even the Toyota product that we like, my dear friend and co-host Paul figures out how to make the GR version, and then we, or me, we figure out the stupid way <laughs> to incorporate GR into the name, and we wind up here. It's a common thread. I'm sorry, Toyota. You've made a solid product in and of itself. It's We're just yes. always looking for GR. <laughs> cool. Seats, ventilated seats, heated yes. seats. Yes. There's so many great standard Good space. amenities. Nice and luxurious. Fantastic road trip car. Don't you want a Signia? Don't you want a ground Signia? Don't you? It's not cheap, but it is good. Yeah, it is. Oh. If it were like 65 with 350 horsepower, maybe 400 horsepower in this to make it move, mm -hmm. boxed fenders with this styling, <laughs> two inches lower. <laughs> Boom. Uh, somebody at Toyota is laughing and another person is crying. But either way, yeah. 